This is my overview of my upcoming tutorial series on working in my live and tracking video fo footage. Um, the purpose of this is just to show you the overall steps needed to get video footage into Maya, track it, and create some sort of a result. In the series, I'll walk you through the steps and explain stuff. So let's start off with a new scene in Maya and go to the live menu set. If it's not there, go to Window Settings slash Preferences Plugin Manager and load the plugin mylive.mll. Assuming it's there, go to Scene, New Match Move, and you should see something like this. This bar is where you'll do all your um, settings for MyLive, and your first thing you should notice is that MyLive can't use videos. It needs to use an image sequence instead of a video file. Um, to convert a video, such as, say, an AVI to a image sequence, I use Virtual Dub. It's free software. Just Google it. You should be able to download it. Then you would open up your video footage, then go to Export Image Sequence. Give it a name, and make sure you set the padding or the amount of zeros to zero. Otherwise, Maya, se I mean one. Otherwise, Maya seems to have an issue reading it. So once you have your video, in my case, I export it out as a JPEG file format. Just select it under the full image, I mean full res image. Then, once you've done that, we can go to the film back and leave it at the default. Then go to track. Well, now it's time to track our video point. So, to create a new point, simply create, click the Create button. Um, to see the options for that point you just created, or the currently selected point, go to Options. We'll cover that later. Um, now, to move that point, use this tool here. You can't use the Move tool or Scale tool. And position it. Now, something I should mention, this outside box represents the search area, and the inside box are the pixels that will be tracked. Now, you need to track pixels pixels to track video footage in Maya and then convert it to camera movements. So I'm going to track the corner of this tile. It's best to pick objects of strong contrast. Then simply click the Start Track button. Okay, once you've tracked your video footage, you'll see a whole bunch of keyframes loaded up into your timeline. And your, this point will follow your video footage as you scrub through the animation. And to do a decent video track, I recommend at least eight points in the shot. So I'll just create a couple of points. Remember, we're looking for points of solid contrast to track and that show a good representation of where the camera's going. In this case, these tiles are perfect. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when I've got a couple more points tracked. Okay, so now I have my eight points tracked. I just want to point out to you this panel over here. This represents the quality of your track. Now, just because it turns red doesn't actually mean the track's bad. It just simply means the pattern or the pixels that are tracked have changed significantly since you started tracking. Really use your own judgment to decide whether or not the point is not sticking to the spot you pointed to on the video. So now it's time to solve. Now this is where we actually start computing where our camera should go. Um, it's pretty simple to do. Simply click Solve, and Maya will walk its magic, and we'll see what we come out with. Now what we want is our virtual camera to um, mimic the um, movements of our real-life camera. Um, something I should mention here is we have this overall pixel slip slip option. This basically tells us how much the image, um, how much the points actually are moving from where they're supposed to be. You want to keep this value below too. Um, right now, we actually have a pretty good track. The only problem is it's really weird positioned. We want to move these points so they're sitting on the grid. Now, to select a point, you can, of course, try and select them in the viewports, but it's quicker just to go to Window, Outliner, open up the group Shot Cam 1 group, then Shot 1 Tracked group, then Clip 1 Tracked Point group, and select point 1 through 8. Now, go to the survey section. This is where we create our constraints, and I want to create a plane constraint, and this will lock them onto the grid. Then click Create. Go back to Solve, and actually, when you're back here, we don't want to actually change our Solve. We just simply want to position it. So I'm going to uncheck, I'm going to ma I'm make sure Register Only is checked. The reason for that is um, Maya won't change their Solve. It will simply, like I said, move it, not changing the position of the points or changing your pixel slip. Click register, and now we've moved it a bit. And like I said, we actually have quite a nice track here. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is scale this track up a bit. It's quite small right now. So I'm going to just select two points, once again going back to the outliner. Just grab two points. These points are adjacent to each other. Go back to Solvay, create a new constraint, and we're going to create a minim a max a distance between these two points. So with them selected, select the constraint type to distance, click create, make sure, make sure registration only is checked. Make sure the distance is set to 2. This could be any value you want, actually. Go back to Solve and click Register. That means, once again, like I think I mentioned this already, moving the objects, not actually resolving the points. So now we have a pretty good solve right here. We can tell by our grid, the ca our virtual camera is moving as though it was our real-life camera. And now we're pretty much done tracking. So to export our track, I'm going to go to Scene, Export Scene as, Maya complete. Give it a name. Um, test. Set the file format in my case to MB. My binary. Click export. Close this scene. Then open up that one. And I'm going to quickly add a cube so we can check the camera's movement with our video just add it to about the spot where our tiles sit um, you notice your frames will be still at your default 48 frames we'll need to set that to 91 frames for our animation this varies of course just set it to how many frames you have in your image sequence and play your animation I've set the camera to shot camera which is what it will be called as you can see, the cube stays pretty well stuck to our video. Um, thanks for watching this tutorial. Like I said, in my rest of my series, I will walk you through these steps and explain them in much more depth and accuracy. Thanks for watching this tutorial.